thank you. I thank you, band. We're on a series of evangelism. We have five E's in our church. Our mission statement is evangelism. If you turn to Mark 5, we went through Mark 5, 1 through 10 last week, and we talked about lost in the crowd. You can get that on our church website. It takes you to YouTube. Uh, you can get that part from 1 to 5. We're going to focus on 11 through 20, part 2. If you would look to Mark 5 and 11, if you have it, say have it. Amen. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him saying, send us to the swine that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about 2,000. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled. And they told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that had happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed in his right mind. Say right mind. See, Jesus will help you get in your right mind. And they were afraid. They were afraid. And those who saw it told them how it happened to him who had been demon-possessed and about the swine. Then they began to plead with him to, pre to depart from their region. They gave him a cold show. And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. He wanted to be with Jesus. That's all he wanted was Jesus. However, Jesus did not permit him, but said to him, go home. Say, go home. Go home. To your friends and tell them. What great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. And he departed, began to proclaim in the copolis and all that Jesus had done for him and all marvel. Amen. Amen. May God bless the reading and hearing of his words. You may be seated. Tell your neighbor it wasn't an accident. It wasn't by chance. We are on a mission with Jesus. Tell your neighbor, we're on a mission with Jesus. Everyone in the body of Christ, you are responsible to proclaim, declare, announce the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. Say amen. See, this is not a suicide mission. It's not a military mission. And some of us have been trying to do this, but it's not a secret mission. It's a mission of the Great Commission. We have a mandate from our master. Tell your neighbor, we have a mandate. He said in Matthew 28, 19 through 20, he says, go. He said, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, 
teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. I tell you, family God, we are in a time and a season in church history where we either evangelize or we will fossilize. Plateau or play out. Family God, we're in a season where it's dark out there. We will either glow and go or we will dry and die. I'm talking to somebody this morning who's drying up. Family of God, we have a motto. We go around beating our chest. We say we are a lighthouse in troubled times. I'm here to declare that it is troubled time. I don't know about you, but somebody's in trouble today. It may be somebody who came to worship this morning. You are in the midst of trouble. Say amen, somebody. God specializes on trouble. He won't leave you dealing with your troubles alone. Say amen. Amen. The demon-possessed man was in trouble. I just want to take a few moments. Have you ever been in trouble? Have you ever had a troubled heart, a troubled moment? You felt a little agitated with somebody or somebody was agitated with you. Perturbed, difficult situation, complex. Say amen if you ever been in trouble and God helped you through. I don't know about you, but I thank God. He's a God in present help in time of trouble. He can help you while you're in trouble. Say amen, somebody. I want to look at three points. I want you to notice it wasn't by chance that this demon-possessed man came face-to-face with Jesus. It was his mission. He didn't accidentally bump into this man. It wasn't just an event. He knows what he's doing. And he says, we're all on a mission. Luke 19.10 says, for the son of man came to seek and to save the lost. There is no misunderstanding about what he's expecting out of you and what he's expecting out of me. We're to go and invite. We ought to go out and pray. We need to tell somebody that Jesus rose from the grave. He's alive and well and the right hand in the Father. Say amen, somebody. I want you to notice that second, it was not by chance Jesus had a heart for the lost. Then he said in Matthew 9 and 37, then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers, say the laborers, are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Family God, we got to pray to the Lord of the harvest. Say, Lord, use me. Isaiah 6, he said, who will go for me? He said, send me, Lord. Tell your neighbor, he is sending you to tell the good news of Jesus Christ. But I want us to notice number three, it wasn't by chance that he saved him that, he, that others may be saved. It says in Acts 1 and 8, but you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you will be witnesses in Jerusalem. He said not that you might be a witness. He said you will be a witness. He didn't say you kind of go through the motions. He said once I do a work in your heart, you can't contain it. Jeremiah had fire. He said I quit. I don't want to do this. But the fire of God got to stir in his spirit and it set him on fire. I tell you, you can't get into the word of God and walk with the Father and not have some fire to witness. Say amen, somebody. Our mission is not to wait on the least, the last, and the lost, it, to just come in our church doors. It is our purpose. It is our mission. It is our passion. We will go out and tell somebody about Jesus. I'm talking about at your job. Don't be at your job all secretive like you don't know Jesus. Tell somebody, I know somebody who can help you with your troubles. Say amen, somebody. The word teaches us in verse 7. If you look back at 7, 5, and 7, 
we get a word from God. It says, and he cried out with a loud voice, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you, you by God, that you do not torment me. I'm going to tell you something. Jesus said, come out of that man, unclean spirit. So it wasn't by chance, it was his mission. Let me talk about what happened. One through five describes the condition of the man with the unclean spirit. Six through 18, it talks about an exorcism. There was a real deal miracle. Uh, 14 to 17, we're going to look at the response of the neighbor. The neighbors didn't get excited. Not everybody's excited when you get saved. You can turn to Acts 16. There was a lady who had a, a spirit, but God, through Paul, delivered that woman, and they wasn't happy. Every time God moves, somebody's mad and somebody's happy. The angels in heaven are celebrating. The demons from hell are mad. It's time for us to make the demons of hell mad. Because when a church is on fire and a church goes out with a word and a church goes out with a word of deliverance, I tell you, it makes somebody mad. Jesus Christ is a demon-busting deliverer who does not take any trash talking from any demons from hell. So whenever somebody come talking some trash, saying, in the name of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb, I'm covered, I'm anointed, devil, you cannot take me down because Jesus is in me. Greater is he that is in me than he's in the world. It wasn't by chance. It wasn't by chance. Jesus deal with the unclean spirit. Jesus let these 6,000 demons know, I am the Lord and I am in charge. I'm telling you, it's time for Christian folks to say, I know him. I know the Lord. And guess what? He is in charge. Tell your neighbor, he is in me. When you go through your dark times, and I'm telling you, you're going to have some rough days. In this world, you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. He said, I have overcome the world. You're not going to stay down. You may be down right now, but let God's word get in your heart. Hallelujah. He'll lift you up. He'll take you higher. He'll help you walk on water. Say amen, somebody. Everything looked hopeless. It looked hopeless. The man was being tormented. He was in the tomb chains and in shackles. He was down and out. But I tell you, it wasn't by chance he met Jesus. I tell you, Jesus is a heart fixer. On this mission, you're going to have to face some unclean spirits. I want to be clear. When you go out, you're going to deal with some spirits. You may know them, not know their name, but Jesus knows them personally. He can call them out. Say amen, somebody. See, the pigs were in trouble. The tormenting spirit, the unclean spirit, was looking for something to possess. I got to be clear. The devil is looking for somebody who's just idle. you just hanging around. you like the pigs running with your posse. you jump here with your group thinking that it ain't going to hunt you down. But the devil is looking for you. He's stalking you. He's saying, I know I got a bunch of bodies, and I'm going to bring them with me. It says in 1 Peter 5 and 8, be alert. Be of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, he is prowling. He's prowling around, looking and roaring like a lion, looking for somebody to devour. You feeling down? Don't you give in to the lie of the devil. You feeling beat down? Don't you allow the devil to have you. Stand on that word. Don't bow down to that mess. Get up. Say, I stand in the name of Jesus. Say hallelujah, somebody. Say glory. I tell you, he's a mighty God. Isn't it ironic? Isn't it ironic? I tell you, isn't it ironic? The devil was, he was tormenting this man. Tormenting him. Christian folks are going through torment. I mean, he's tormenting, man. And he said, Jesus, don't torment me. Isn't that kind of crazy? You don't mind hurting others, but you don't want nobody hurting you. 
But I tell you, there's three types of unclean spirits. The Bible said his name was Legion. It said 6,000. 6,000. There was only 2,000 pigs, but there were 6,000 demons. Somebody had an extra amount of demons. Wow. Sometimes you walk by somebody and they are loaded up. You think you done ran into some fire. You say, well, what in the world have I faced? Say amen, somebody. There are three types of demons. Write it down. Number one, they're tormenting spirits, unclean spirits. Number one, Daniel faced it. They said that the, 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 the prince of Persia, Daniel was in the prayer room. He was talking to God. He was in the place, and he prayed. Some of you have prayed, and you don't see your prayers being answered. I want you to get this word, hold on, because the devil is trying to get you distracted and misdirected, but your prayer, you pray for your son. You will pray for your daughter. You will pray for your brother. You will pray, but have faith. It's on delay, but he will get there with the word. See, a tormenting spirit wants to block you, distract you, defeat you. This affects Christians. Paul got affected. He said, a messenger of Satan, 2 Corinthians 12, and said, he was trying to hinder me. Paul went to the Lord. He got on his knees, Sister Nell. He saw them three times. He said, Lord, set me free. But God said, my grace, my grace, my grace. My grace. Our grace is sufficient. I've given you what it takes to get through this tormenting. Tell your neighbor, you don't have to be tormented. Number two, an unclean spirit wants to bind you. That's the binding demon. They want to put you in jail. They love working through addiction. They love getting you tied up and stuff. But I tell you, this man, when he met Jesus... When he met Jesus, Jesus told that demon, your time is up. Get out and get out now. I say hallelujah to the Lord. Here, number three, Jesus deals with evil spirits. So there are tormenting spirits, there's binding spirits, and there's evil spirit. It says in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, be careful of the spirits. It says in 1 John 4, 1 through 3, it says test the spirits. And see if it's from God. See, the pigs went crazy. See, when they saw those pigs just hanging around, the devil and his demons said, I'm going to occupy this. And they went crazy. The demons said, something ain't right. When they jumped into the pigs, the pigs said, something ain't right. Can you imagine 2,000 pigs coming at you, running down to the sea? I don't know if anybody was doing any sunbathing that day. But I tell you, when the devil comes running with those pigs, he takes them down and draws them. See, the devil comes to kill. He comes to steal. Has somebody stole your joy? Tell him it's over now. I met Jesus. Has someone taken your joy, your fire? So Jesus will give it back. Those devils went crazy and those demons. I tell you, but the second thing, it wasn't by chance. He had a heart, heart for the lost. See, let's look at the word in verse 15. It says, Mark 5 and 15. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed, say clothed, in his right mind. And they were afraid. Isn't it amazing that when you got in the witness, you get a little scared. But Jesus is full of love. He said, I care about the lost. I I, I'm going to face these fears. I'm going to deal with what God told me. It says in 2 Timothy 4 and 2, be in season, be ready in season, and be ready out of season. You're always not going to feel like it. First lady and I went to dinner. We just wanted some born. What's the name of that? Uh, Dave and Buster's. That's what it is. We just want to eat us a hamburger. And you know pastor loves to eat. So here we are sitting ministering, and it didn't take one minute. Tears broke out with the families and people we were dealing with. Her food comes. It sits on the table. 
She's in up ministering. You never know when God's going to call you to do ministry. You got to choose your meal or you got to choose Jesus. You got to make a choice. So we choose Jesus. You're going to be sent out there and you can expect that it's not by chance you end up talking to somebody who's troubled, somebody who needs prayer. Matter of fact, ask your waitress, can I pray for you? You'll be shocked what they will tell you. Say amen, somebody. Amen. See, this is what mess meant. There, there's a demon-possessed man, but that's not what frightened the people in this story. There's here a man who's exercised. Pigs who go wild, will destroy themselves, die. But that's not what frightened the people. What frightened them was the man was in his right mind. Now that messed me up. He was in his right mind. Say right mind. See, sometimes stuff come at us and we're not in our right mind. Oh, let me go there. Sometimes you are in a marriage and every once in a while it gets out of balance because one of you, if not both of you, are not in your right mind. But when you go get to with Jesus, Jesus has a way of getting you in your right mind. Say amen, somebody. That was a commercial. I wasn't part of the amen. What, what frightens them is the holy, not the unholy. What frightens them is that this, this evil atmosphere, they were more comfortable with evil and brokenness and dysfunction than holy and in a right mind. Sometimes God got to teach us that we become too comfortable with just getting by. But God's trying to do a new thing. He's trying to tell us something. You want your marriage to blossom? Get in the Word and get a right mind. He said, let the same mind that's in me, that's in Jesus, be in you. I messed that up, but y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. See, you ain't in your right mind if you don't obey the Word. Say amen, somebody. Doesn't it strike you kind of funny? People are afraid of the wrong things, comfortable with the wrong things. It says here, uh, Matthew 10, 20, 28, Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but he who can destroy both body and soul. It said in Exodus 19 and 18. Here they were. They saw miracle after miracle, the children of Israel. God parts the Red Sea. Man, now, they've been praying for 400 years. God, deliver me. God, deliver me. Come on, God, do what you got to do. So God opens the Red Sea. God delivers them. So in 1918, they get all the way up to the mountain. But the mountain starts to shake. Boom. The ground starts to tremble. Man, they get so close. They said, hey, Moses, I tell you what. Let's cut a deal. You talk to God, and I'll stay down here. See, when you come on holy ground, it can terrify you. I don't know about you, but to enter God's presence, see, when you come in that which is holy, you ain't worried about the little petty stuff because God takes over. See, they knew that God was for real. See, you can't be faking church going up to a holy mountain. You can't just be getting by with a church once in a while. You said, I want God, and I want him like this man. I want him now. That pilot... He was on a German plane. That pilot, some spirit got on him. He locked out the co-pilot, locked out the pilot. And he just went into some zone. They said he was breathing. And those people going down, they crying and beating on the door. But some spirit got hold of his mind. He was not in the right mind. But I'm telling you, when you take the blood of the Lamb, the blood of Jesus, he'll help you to get in your right mind. Say hallelujah, somebody. The third point, it wasn't by chance. He saved him that others may be saved. He didn't save you just so you can sit here and get comfortable. He saved you that you would tell others. I'm telling you, he's, tell, he's planning on you speaking a word to somebody who's lost. We're standing on holy ground. But I want to be, you to be careful. Let's go to verse 17. 5.17. He says here, then they, 
began to plead with him to depart from the region. They gave Jesus a cold shoulder. You're going to get a cold so shoulder, shoulder when you go out there. And when he got into the boat, he who had been demon-possessed begged him that he might be with him. This was what got me. He begged him that he be with him. Jesus did not permit him. He said, go home to your friends and tell them. Just tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he, and he had compassion on him. This got me. I just said, oh, God, you're a good God. He had been delivered. He was saved. God had brought him out. But the true test of obedience and transformation, he wanted to go with Jesus. But Jesus said, I don't want you to go with me. What I want you to do is take on a kingdom assignment. All he had, Sister Aletha, was a testimony. That's all he was equipped. But when you meet Jesus, that's all you need. Just tell her he's done something for you. Now, if he ain't done nothing from you, you ain't got nothing to talk about. But when he does something for you, you should say hallelujah. He brought me, and I got a testimony. I tell you, somebody in the house, just stand up and give God some praise because you have a testimony. God brought you out of it. God delivered you. He set you free. He gave you love. Say amen, somebody. He went to the capitalist. He began to tell people about the good news of Jesus Christ. Luke 12, and they said, and I tell you, everyone who acknowledged me before men, the Son of Man will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. You don't got to say a word. Don't be silent. But one day you're going to die. One day you're going to be done. One day it's over. You're going to find yourself at the pearly gates. And guess what? You ain't said nothing down here. You're going to tremble, oh Jesus. Please remember me. The Bible said not everyone who calls me Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will, ho, ho. He that does the will of my Father. What's the Father's will? It's to go, glow. Tell you never go and glow with the Holy Ghost. Go and glow with the anointing. Go and let the Holy Ghost make you a witness. Go and let him take over. Go and let him have his way. Go. Yeah, go. I don't care how tough it is. Go. I'm telling you, go. Go. While you out here drinking your whiskey and your wine, you're supposed to be going. I ain't saying nothing wrong about the whiskey. I'm saying you need to be about your father's business. I say hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The man had a testimony. But see, mercy, mercy. What is that mercy? He said that he had compassion on him. I got to get mad. I got a medal. He had passion on him. He had compassion. The word, Greek word is eleo. 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 Mercy. Divine mercy. David had got messed up in Psalms 51. He said, have mercy on me, O Lord. He said, I was born in the could Have mercy on me. I'm telling you, God will have mercy on you. But somebody need to know that they done fell on their face. They done hit the rock bottom. They need to know about God's love and God's mercy. I don't know about you, but he has some mercy on me. I have flashbacks every once in a while. It's called PTSD. Say praise the Lord. I go back with some traumatic experience. I remember when I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I should have got the worst, but God gave me his best. That's mercy. I remember I was riding the car. We had a wreck, head on with an 18-wheeler. That was mercy because I was lost. I don't know about you, but you've been in some humiliating experiences. I don't know about you, but I've hugged a couple of toilet bowls. I've faced it. I'm talking about dirty car. I'm talking about the worst kind of, but when you sick in the heart and sick in your spirit and you try to drink it away, I hugged that bowl and gave it all up. Somebody's been swallowing stuff. You've been drinking some stuff and you sick. 
And God says time for you to, woo, get it out of you. Somebody walk around, you've got an upset stomach. I'm telling you, God saying it's time to get rid of some stuff. Woo, hallelujah. Mercy. Confid- forgiveness. Put him in his right mind. But I got to close with this story. Woo. True story from Reader's Digest. A man named Marcel Sternberger in the Reader's Digest tells of a story. Marcel Sternberger rolled a New York train. I don't know a sister from my New York. Where is she at? Sister Shirley. Oh, there she is. She, he rolled a 905 every Sunday morning to Manhattan. Every day he got on the subway train. But one day, a friend got critically ill. If you turn to the next picture, you'll see this couple. One day, he was critically ill. Steinberg, instead of uh, uh, going on a train, visit his friend from 8 to 12. He got on the 12 o'clock plane, on train. When he got on that train, it was crowded. It was chaos. People elbowing, trying to get on the train. And while he was standing there, elbow to elbow, a man realized that he was supposed to get out at this stop, jumped up, and barely got off the subway train. Sternberger sat down in that chair. Sure enough, he sat by a man, and the man opened up a newspaper, and he looking at the one ass. Sternberger said he happened to read Hungria, so he knew the language. So he asked the old man, he said, did you, uh, uh, looking for a job? He said, no, I'm looking for my wife. He said, we had a great marriage. We were very much in love. But in World War II, we were in uh, the Brecken. And they, the German soldier asked me to go bury the dead Germans. And so they said, come and go to Germany. I want you to bury the dead. He said, no, you're going to take my wife and my children. But he went anyhow. And sure enough, the Nazis came in and took his wife and took his children. Unbelievable. He was separated from his wife. When he came back, his family were gone. The American troopers came over there and rescued and set everybody free and took uh, her to New York. He never seen, he had never seen her for 50 years. He'd been praying to God, God, where is my wife? Where is my wife? And here he is sitting down talking to this guy, and the guy begins to explain how his wife was taken. Not only has his wife was taken, he thinks she's dead. She was killed by the Nazis. And he'd been praying and opening a newspaper, hoping that he would find his wife. And I'm telling you, this is what God can do. Looking for his wife, this man, Sternberg, sits by this man and said, you may not believe this, but tell me more about this place, where the Brecken, where you're from. Give me the address. Tell me your wife's name. He said, my wife's name is Maria. Maria? And what's the name? It is uh, Baskin. And so here the story is going. I'm reading this. This is in Reader's Digest. I'm reading this story. It's grabbing my heart. Here he's talking to man. He says, sir, I need you to get off the train, and I need you to trust me. I'm taking you somewhere. The man says, what, what, what? I, I'll follow you, but what? He said, just follow me. See, three days earlier, Sternberg was sitting with an elderly lady at a cocktail party, and she told him the same identical story. She said, I'm looking for my husband. I've been praying, trying to find my husband. I'm looking for his name. And here his name was Pella Baskin. So here the man takes him off. He had the telephone number. He got it out of his pocket. He looked up the number Maria Baskin. You won't believe how God works. Both of them been praying, separated for 50 years, still married, never remarried. Waiting, looking, hunting for his wife. The man calls the phone, said, Maria? He said, yes, this is Maria. He said, what is your husband's name? She said, Bella. And he said, what, what? She said, Bella Baskin is my husband. So he goes on and asks the man, what's your wife's name? She said, Maria Baskin. He said to Bella, you about to witness a miracle of a lifetime. He takes the phone and hands it to the husband, Bella. Bella gets on the phone and says, hello? Maria says, hello, Bella? 
And Maria, he breaks down and says, Maria, 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 I thank God I have found Maria, Maria. He is emotional. He's beside himself. Now the scalper says, this is uh, very like, unlikely. But I'll tell you, it wasn't by chance somebody got sick that day. I'll tell you, it wasn't by chance he's riding on a 12 o'clock a train and he never been on that train. It wasn't by chance. It wasn't by chance. He ended up in the only seat that became vacant at the last minute with a newspaper. It wasn't by chance. But I tell you, it wasn't by chance that Jesus went to the cross. It wasn't by chance that he looked down low. He came down, saved our soul. It wasn't by chance. I don't know about you, but it's not by chance you're sitting here this morning. I'm telling he sent you to the family of God because it's not by chance. He wants you to gird up with the, the word of faith. Say hallelujah. It wasn't by chance. I tell you, we serve a mighty God. Let the redeem of the Lord say so. Somebody need to go to, 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 to Parker and say.